Hi, I'm Javier Orozco and I'll be guiding you through the part within the uh, module for physical transition, the sub-module or the sub-part for building integrated modeling. Basically, through the analysis of software tools, we'll go on the concept on how to model a city, how should we implement different uh, information models for our building and for selecting the parts of the building, and uh, this structure of information levels will provide us the basic uh, data which we'll be using for the overall sustainable analysis of the building. Let's go into this uh, nice sub-module. First, which are the different software tools? There are different providers, some of them are commercial, there is also an open approach to BIM, which is this building integrated modeling which is becoming very fashionable nowadays and the software tools provide us with the tool with the solutions we need for the creation of uh, our design and implementing all data uh, maps onto this design uh, create different uh, alternatives for the architectural solution provide an analysis for them and elaborate finally the plans which we'll be using and needing for uh, building our solution within the city. The database designer has a key important role if we are to consider different parameters which are linked to the building and the system architect should consider how to implement the connections to the different providers. These basic connections are which the elements which should be analyzed for obtaining a good software tools on implementing BIM. Next step, we should provide an enabler which uh, performs the actual design of the database and the different elements and then go through the different solutions and transitions on the early design for the database because this will solve most of the problems and provide a uh, understandable, graspable model which is a very good implementation and therefore the basis for a good solution which is sustainable for our purposes. Once we have all these elements in place, the design for the database should consider first the systematic analysis on all key elements we are considering as basic for our design namely the ISO standard is the basis for this design. The data structures should be connected and be operated within the model very easily and uh, completely integrated for future changes and allow no space for missing links and other problems which should be uh, very important if the content is not developed properly. The low-level data design is also again a very important issue because it has to be following all the processes in the building and follow or come with us until the very late design process and the, even the management of that building. The representations of the data structure is not something important for the user but has to help the designers and also provide a good connection for library providers. This is all implemented in our architectural model for the system, architecture for the software, and the abstract data types which should be uh, exchanged with data providers on materials and solutions. Again, once we have this, we are able to represent the system in a context we can define the architects, archetypes, the different parts of the data model which are key for the sustainability analysis. It allows us a good refinement of the architecture into the different components and describes all the different exchanges or instantiations which are needed for our system. So, uh, we should be doing this design work when we are going from the software tool we have selected onto the actual model, but once it's in place we cannot hide our mistakes. So be careful because uh, this is a very important part which you have, should be taking into mind very seriously. Once we have our 
software tool selected and our uh, database structure and architecture implemented. We are filling it with data, which is to help us in modeling a city. For that, we should be curious and need commitment, will and a very high level on implementation for being able to obtain a result which is valid not only at our limited level but also within the city council level and if possible at country or even European or country superstructure level. So here we cannot do much except try to follow the standards which are provided at international level. Once we have all this in place and we have done our work, we are highly expectant but the implementation normally comes to a standpoint and roughly the reality nowadays is that we are here. BIM is sufficiently established and provides all this solution already tested and uh, developed through according to the different stand, uh, standards and the next step is the integration at national level, even at European level, where there is a very high commitment on to the BIM reality, which is going forward in a very powerful way. Again, let's analyze what we will be using for this course. First, our software tool, which was Revit, developed by Autodesk, and which is the non-official standard for BIM implementation. Here we include data, which is basically CAD, even raster implementation from information we don't actually have in any other format, or we can capture the reality through different points clouds, or uh, important 3D developments which are also implemented. All these together with the geographical information are linked into our BIM model. So, the remaining parts of Revit, non-spatial information, databases, cloud management of information and exchange formats, is where we should be including the architectural design that we spoke of previously and will help us in providing data for the materials for the use and uh, providing solutions on the analysis, the sustainability analysis of our building. Again, if we are within a city, uh, we should consider what's 3D for us. 3D basically is blocks and we, that's the minimum level we need uh, for obtaining all the data which is relevant on a building for performing the city analysis. These 3D models could include a surface implementation of the building, include architecture, appearance, infrastructure, but all these possibilities are optional, although very desirable, for performing later the maintenance. The very minimum is the 3D implementation, basically an extrusion, a space that is holding the data information for sustainability analysis. Once we have that, we have different possibilities, for example, if we are implementing surfaces, we can perform analysis on width resistance of orientations, uh, even structural analysis through finite element methods. In solid, we can include also uh, solutions for materials, we can include the different multi-solutions for performing the design and the optimization of the materials and including in all these elements which are basically the design, the detailed design of the building, the geometric properties for obtaining for example the budget for our building or all the data which is needed not only for mechanical analysis but also for the sustainability implementation. Here we have two solutions which you can find on our uh, website, uh, the detailed models, for example for the city of Berlin and the city of Karlsruhe, where all the information has been implemented for only a block of buildings, including all the basic data for sustainability analysis. Again, remember, the modeling of a building will include or will possibly include the structural information, mechanical analysis, the design, 
which is or could be parametric for uh, performing uh, this element analysis and also uh, a database which is connected to all that for uh, being able to obtain the measurements. The database basically is materials information. We join in this information with some other data for maintenance analysis and for quality standards and produce uh, an document, an electronic document, which can be shared with contractors and subcontractors for performing the implementation of the building. Once we have all this in place, we include some other elements, for example, the data eh, enablers, the data enrichments, for eh, assessing eh, connections of our building to the support eh, systems and contractors, to eh, providers of electricity, gas, eh, water, and so on, and also obtain a whole image which is the as-is uh, image of our design of our building. Here we will be able to perform our life cycle cost analysis through the methodology that has been introduced on this course and be able to obtain a picture for all the individual buildings or even for the city. So, the building information model is a 3D drawing which includes some additional information and can include many different solutions, either capital cost, time programs, life cycle analysis, facilities management. We are interested only in this part, the life cycle analysis, which is linked to the embodied carbon because that's what will provide us with an image of the solution and of the city and its evolution through use and time. Again, this is the overall final implementation of the different layers, including the subsystems for our model on the building, which can be embodied at uh, envelope 3D model only, and which provides us with all these possible solutions. Again, we are only interested in using standard data, which can be connected to different uh, clients or providers, and this uh, standard information will be able to analyze all the different solutions or the performance of the building as is. Uh, here we will have uh, examples of a building and how the databases are including data, for example, capital uh, rates, carbon reduction, capital allowances, and so on. So this is a full implementation which can be met in one of the different models we have shared before. It is also possible to include modul modular information for parametric design, even energy solutions into our design. All these will develop the overall Revit file, including the different facilities, and which you will not have to deal specifically because it has already been be pre prepared from the, the architectural design of the database that you made previously. Later, we will obtain the results in, for example, Excel format and perform an analysis that can include all the different layers, not only the occupation layer, but also the green infrastructure and uh, sub-level, uh, subsurface information which might be relevant. Here you can have in, on this link a very nice example of the different information layers that you can include beyond the actual model that we implemented on this course. Again, this is a very quick summary of the course. You should go into the detailed implementation of the course in the different slides and do the exercises in order to be able to work forward on the project. Thank you very much.